here ready to preach the word. He's going to give it to you. Yeah, like sparrows in the nest. Open your mouths. Here it comes. <laughs> sitting down and just going to receive what the Lord um, gives us tonight as a body. So I really encourage you to be there. If, you, if you're making plans to do something else, um, you're out of luck. You're, you're going to miss it and you'll be sorry, okay? So I just wanted to let you know. Um, you know, we can go through the book of Acts and there's one verse that we always go back to that I will always go back to. It is Acts 1.8. It is the interpretive key for the whole book of Acts. It, everything centers around this one verse. And so I'm going to read it again this morning. Um, you may get tired of it, that's okay. Um, but it's an amazing verse. In Acts 1, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. The truth is that if you are a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, we will do what he did. We will look like him. A true believer will look and act like Jesus. You can't help it. If you've decided to follow Jesus, look what this verse says, it will change who you are. It says, you will receive power. It will change who you are. You will not live the same way when you receive Jesus Christ. The power of God, the Holy Spirit will come on you and in you. It will change who you are and then it shows also, it will change what you do. You will be my witness. You see that, those two simple things. And so what we've been talking about two weeks ago, I kind of started talking about some of the things that, that, are, um, that we have as obstacles in sharing the gospel. And I want to kind of complete that sermon, um, that talk this morning. We looked at how one of the things that really affects us, one of the obstacles we have when sharing the gospel, is how you view God. Remember I put up the, the picture of Jesus laughing. So many people don't see Jesus that way. They see him kind of as harsh or very serious all the time. I see him as laughing. I had a fun experience yesterday. I had somebody contact me and say, hey, can we get breakfast together? And I said, sure. And this is a person that I really don't know well, uh, really don't know hardly at all. Um, and they contacted me, so we got together. And after we had talked for about a half hour, I, I finally said, you know, can I ask you, why is it you wanted to meet? And he said, because you seem to be happy. <laughs> See, it will show. When, we're, when we meet Christ, it changes us. I went from a depressed child most of my life to really, honestly, I am happy. And he said, I wanted to be with you 
because you seem to be happy and I want to know what that is. Really kind of cool and quite honestly for me was one of the greatest compliments I've ever given, been given. So how we view God, how we view his character, his personality will affect the way we share the gospel. A second thing is your condition, the condition of your relationship with God will affect how you share the gospel. Do you truly know him? Do you really know this, this person of Jesus Christ? Do you really know the person of the Holy Spirit? Or have you been kind of just a religious, it's, it's a duty that, that you've kind of always done? You see, he wants to know us in such a personal way. And I think for most of my life, for much of my life, it was, you know, I was raised in the church, and so you just kind of do church things. But you know, he, he really is interested in each one of you individually, in a personal, personal way. And so how you, your, your, the, the condition of your relationship with him will, will really change the way you share the gospel. Um, I talked about Bob Sampson two weeks ago, how his whole testimony was, uh, hi, I'm Bob from Huntington Beach. And, and I didn't go on, I felt horrible, because that's not who Bob is anymore. Though he is Bob from Huntington Beach, God got a hold of Bob in Uganda in a way that was amazing and gave him a ministry, a simple ministry. Now again, we're talking about getting outside the walls and Bob had taken a, a frisbee to Uganda and um, somebody, there were some kids in a field and somebody said, hey, you have your frisbee. I think he took it because his dog had just passed away. It was his dog's frisbee. I don't know why he brought it, but he did. Well, what happened was he goes out in this field and he begins to throw this frisbee to these kids and suddenly we have 50, 60 kids learning how to throw a frisbee. They'd never seen one. And now when we go to Uganda, oftentimes, if you're in northern Uganda and you see a frisbee, it's probably from Bob. <laughs> he has a frisbee ministry. <laughs> So Bob is no longer just Bob from Huntington Beach. Bob is a man who knows Jesus personally. He, and he, he emulates Christ. And the love that flows from him is really the love of the Spirit that goes out to so many. So how you view him, your condition of your relationship with him. And then we talked about trying to do what God is not doing. Sometimes... Um, we see the way some people do things and, and so we think that's the way we have to do it. Um, or we, we have an agenda. And our agenda, our agenda is more important than the person we're with. Um, Carl shared a story of my aunt, um, shared on Facebook. My aunt was uh, at a store and she was in one of those carts that I've always wanted to do. I can't wait till I can do that. Was, <laughs> that you drive around, right? And so she's, she's a bit handicapped, so she goes out to her car, and this guy comes up and says, Hey, can I pray for you? And, and she said, Yeah, that'd be nice. So he prays for her and basically says, Then be blessed, and he walks away. <laughs> well, his agenda was he wanted to pray for this person that wasn't doing well, but he forgot that really what she needed probably was help taking those groceries out of the basket and putting them into the car for her. Which one shows Jesus more? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we get so agenda driven that we really start doing what God is not doing. And so that's one of the things that hinders or one of the obstacles to sharing the gospel. We try to be someone other than the person that God created you to be. That's the fourth thing. We try to, to imitate the way someone else does it. We want to share Jesus with people, but I think we often struggle with um, who we think we must become in order to do that. So what I want to look at this morning is kind of on this, who must you become to share the gospel? The way you share the gospel, it quite honestly, is influenced 
by your unique personality. When you share the gospel, you don't have to be anybody else. I remember in Uganda, listening to, the very first time, listening to this, this um, worship leader, and he had a, as he talked, when he was leading worship, he talked like um, Southern Baptist somewhere deep in the South, with that evangelical, you know, that glory to God kind of thing, right? And I'm thinking, that just sounds so weird coming out of this Ugandan who's never even been to the United States, but that's what he saw on television, and so that's what he tried to become. And so you see, sometimes we try to become, we try to do it like somebody else, and so this morning I just want to look at the uniqueness of you. You see, your personality is formed primarily by two things. One, you're hardwired by God a certain way. You are. There's just things about me that God just put in me the way I do it. Okay? And, and so I want you to know that sometimes you're just who you are because God made you that way. And, and don't try to change that so much. But there's also a second part, and that is your life experience is part of what makes you who you are. And see, God uses both of those. He actually gives you life experience to make you the person he wants you to be, to reach the people he wants you to reach. So he wants you to be you, uniquely you, nobody else. And, and I hope that you don't look at somebody and go, oh, I wish I was more like that person. I do, I have a problem with that once in a while, right? And I know Carl, he has a problem with wanting to be like me. <laughs> and I've been trying to minister to him on that and let him know. I'm glad he's not here. I got some things planned for him, by the way, don't tell him. Um, you all will be part of it when he comes back. God made you uniquely you. And so he wants you to be you and share the gospel. So we're going to look at some ways, some, this morning, some ways that people do this. Now, I wish I could tell you that this was just me, that I, uh, in my infinite wisdom and uh, uh, incredible intellect, came up with all of these things, but I didn't. Quite honestly, I, I brought this book because this is an amazing book called Becoming a Contagious Christian by Bill Hybels. I recommend it. You know, I've never stood up here and recommended a book, unless it's my frog book that I wrote that you can order on Whitefish Press. Uh, frog Fishing Lures. Um, it's the best-selling book. It's the only one out there like it. Um, you sold 20 copies. Becoming a Contagious Christian. What I'm going to share with you is really the things that Bill is shared in this, in this book. And, I, and it's so good that I just, I, I, I can't claim it as my own, because you'll know that it wasn't me, because it's so good. But he talks about some different styles, and he actually identifies six different styles um, of sharing the gospel. The first one, we see in Acts 2, um, where Peter stands up after the, the Spirit has come upon them, and we see him address the people and he says, in verse 22, Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. He goes on in verse 36, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Confrontation. He is saying, listen, you bunch of bums, you killed Jesus. Confronting them with this reality. You saw what he did. You saw the miracles he performed. And then you decided to put him to death. So Peter, as we see Peter often, Peter just goes for it. 
But I can I tell you that that does work? 3,000 people were added to the number that day. Because when they were, when, when he said it, they were struck to their core. What must we do? Repent and be baptized. Okay? And so we see this, this style that really was Peter. As we look at Peter's life, remember what Peter did, cutting off the ear of somebody. I shared it a couple of weeks ago. How, how many times do I have to get this jerk? You know, Peter was just kind of that abrasive guy that was, you know, it's kind of like ready, fire, aim. You know, he was, if, he, if he believed it, he just went with everything for it. That was Peter. And so we see a rather confrontive style in Peter. But you see, that was Peter. And you don't have to be that confrontive style unless that's kind of who you are. No, you still have to do it in love. Okay? When we go out and you share the gospel, there may be times where for you it's just, this, this is what you've done. We've all sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. You crucified Him. Do you realize that, that you're living your life completely against Him? Repent. There's a personality style that would do that. The second one that I want to look at, it's an intellectual style. This was Paul's approach. Paul is amazing. When you read books like Romans, it's just he is able to just take apart the gospel and explain it intellectually to people. Look what he says in, in 2 Corinthians 10. It says, we destroy arguments in every lofty option raised against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We destroy arguments. This is the guy that can just, somebody gives you an argument and you go, okay, let's go with that. And you just intellectually take that apart and show them the truth. See, that was Paul. So maybe that's kind of who you are. It's, you're more of a, you like to get into apologetics. Why things are the way they are. Simply to find or to defend the Christian faith. You know, we were having, and we're going to have it again, the Alpha class, and that's what it is. The Alpha class is just simply defending the Christian faith, explaining the Christian faith. It's an intellectual approach for people that are kind of seeking to have their questions answered. And so, a second style we see is intellectual then, this is the style I just love. It's a testimonial style. And one of my favorite stories when it comes to this is um, the story of the blind man we find in John 9. And I want to read some of this because this is so cool. This is so cool. If you ever think that you need to know a lot of stuff in order to go out and share the gospel, I want you to read this story, okay? You don't have to have a degree. Quite honestly, you could, the very day you get saved, this is a style. You don't need to know a single verse in the Bible for this one. Hey, some of you go, cool, because I never read my Bible. That'll be a good one for me. <laughs> so in John 9, or John, uh, yeah, John 9, starting at verse 9, as he passed by, he saw a, blind, a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned that this man, this man or his parents, that this, this man is born blind? Jesus said, it's not that this, this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And having said these things, he spit on the ground, he made mud with his saliva, and then... He anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, now I love that word, anointed. I spit on the ground and make saliva, and I am going to anoint. It's so spiritual. I'm going to stick some mud in your eye. He sticks this mud in the guy's eye, and he says to him, now go wash in the pool, in the pool of uh, Siloam, which means scent. So he went and he washed, and he came back seeing. 
And the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man that used to sit and beg? And some said, It is he. And others said, No, can't be him. And I love this. And it says, And he kept saying, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. Really, I am. Seriously, I'm the guy. So they said to him, Then, then how were your eyes opened? This, now listen to this. A testimonial style. He answered, the man called Jesus made mud. He stuck it in my eyes and he said, go and wash. And so I went, I washed, and I received my sight. And they said, where, where is he? He said, I don't know. And so they brought the Pharisees to the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day and Jesus made mud and opened his eyes which was against the law according to the Pharisees. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to him, he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. Verse 16, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, Jesus, they're referring to Jesus, for he does not keep the Sabbath. And then others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. Verse 17, And so they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? The blind man said, He's a prophet. Skip down to verse 24. For the second time, they called the man who had been blind, that's the Pharisees, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God, for we know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And he answered, And this I love. Whether he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, I now see. Gosh, I get goosebumps when I think about it. See, we don't have to have a lot of knowledge. I, I, I don't know everything there is to you know. I can't answer all your questions about Jesus. But I can tell you this. He changed my life. He changed me. So he didn't take an apologetic approach. He just said, this is what I've experienced with Jesus. That's it. And so, for some of you, you have a testimony that God has given you, probably all of you that know him. And sometimes it's just that testimony. But I don't know, I don't have all the answers. I can't explain it all to you. But I do know this. I used to be a really depressed little boy. And I found him, and he's made me so happy. And I can't explain much more than that other than he's changed me. I'm no longer who I used to be. That's an amazing approach to sharing the gospel. There's a relational style. We see it with Matthew. When Jesus calls Matthew, and he says, hey, I'm coming over to your house, Matthew gets all his friends and brings them in. Remember the story? There's a relational style, and this is really kind of my style. When I share with you about um, the, the cigar shop that I go to, okay, and, and I know some people have a hard time with it, I'm developing relationship with men that would never come into this building. And, but they know me as PD, Pastor Don. And it's been over a year I've been doing this, and one by one they're talking to me, okay? And they're beginning to seek. This, this, sky, this style is, is a real gradual approach. It can actually become, for me, discouraging at times. And there are times where I have to pray, and say, Lord, am I having any impact? Am I wasting my time? A relational style approach, it's, it's very interactive. It's, it, if you're a good listener, this is a great style for you. People that have this style, they're, they're skilled at relationship building. They tend to be con uh, conversational, compassionate, sensitive, friendship focused or oriented. It's a gradual style. And it's, it's one for me that, that just comes easy. The hardest part is it does take time. And sometimes you just feel like you're not having an impact. But I want to encourage you, if you're that kind of person, continue 
Um, Heidi shared a little last week. Um, one of the things that, uh, that Heidi does, she was telling us, and why it was hard for her to leave their neighborhood, is that she and the kids would go around and say hi to all of the neighbors. And I think, didn't you say cookies to some of the older ones? And, you know, just, hi, how are you? That's relationship style, okay? And, and those, the, one, of the, one of the older gals one day said to her daughter, I haven't seen you for a while. See, that's an amazing style. There's an invitational style. We see this with the woman at the well. Remember the woman at the well, the story where Jesus meets her and, and they get talking and basically he tells her, hey, um, you're living with this guy and you've had all kinds of husbands and she's like blown away. She runs to the, 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 the uh, community that she's from and she says, come and see this man that told me everything I've ever done. Okay? He didn't, but she was so taken by him, she goes out and she invites everybody to come and see him. This is one of the reasons we do events. This is one of the reasons that the women get together on Fridays. This is one of the reasons we they get, they're getting together this weekend, this next weekend, um, and having Susie? Susie, Susie come. It's like, so we can say, come and see. It's a, it's a very easy style for those of you that struggle with sharing the gospel. Inviting people. This is why we do DSO. Doesn't shoot at it. So men that would never come to church, they go, I love guns. And if we're shooting guns, I'm going. So we invite them to come. Invitational style. And if you'll remember the, the story, it says that many of the people believed because of what she said, her testimony. And then it says others, when they met him, believed. Invitation. You see, all we have to do is be who we are. And then do kind of what you do naturally, but have it focused on Christ. Have it focused on people really getting to know Him. There's another style that I'm no good at. I want to get better at. It's a supernatural style. Philip, in Acts 8, now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them and many who were paralyzed or, or lame were healed. So there was much joy in the city. I want that. I want that. Me too. You know, but I'll be honest. I want you to do what God has purpose for you to do. Who he's made you to be. In a few weeks, we're going to have Robbie Dawkins here. Um, Robbie makes me look like a little man. Robbie's much bigger than me. And this is his style. Robbie can go to a witchcraft convention, sit up, set up a booth and pray for people and watch demons leave them. Yeah. I mean, that's what he likes to do. Okay? And he prays for the sick and they're healed. That's what he likes to do. That's Robbie's style. That's how God has, has formed him. That's what God has, has placed in him. I can't be Robbie Dawkins. So when Robbie comes, he's, he'll talk about what he does and you're going to go, ooh, I want to do that. Good. Go ahead and do that. But realize you may not be Robbie Dawkins. Amen. You're you. Amen. And what God wants to do is have you take who you are by the power of the Holy Spirit and use you. Amen. He's created you for that. He's formed you. See, you're hardwired. You are. You're also, you have life experience. Some of you have gone through very, 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 very difficult things. And you, you think, gosh, what, why? Because there's purpose. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be able to reach people that have gone through very, 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 very difficult things because you have. Yeah. 
This guy that I had breakfast with yesterday, finally he says, I hope that I'm, this isn't out of line, but have you ever gone through really dark times? See, I wish I had, could tell him. It, it's, it's for some, I really don't wish, but yeah, I was in prison. Yeah, I did this and I did that. See, I, I didn't. But there's somebody, and probably somebody in this body, who can relate, can relate to that. <coughs> can say, yeah, I did. I went through some really dark times. I made some really <coughs> bad decisions. See, they can minister to this guy when I can't. I, I, I was raised in a Christian home. You know, I lied a few times. That's pretty dark. <laughs> you know, I was trying to think the worst things I'd ever done. You know, I'm trying to tell him, and it's like, eh, they're not that bad when it comes compared to you. See, so why do you go through difficult times? Because God has purpose. And sometimes we think, oh no, it's the devil's gaining victory. You know what? He's not. The devil, quite honestly, God uses the devil for his purpose. Nothing will happen to you that God does not allow or give permission to. And it's for purpose. And though I don't understand it, and it is really hard, and I can't explain it, He's got a purpose for you. Or you wouldn't be experiencing what you experience. He is forming you. And He is causing you to be hope to those who have lost hope who are going through what you're going through. See, that's what's so cool about the gospel. It is the one hope that we have, no matter who we are, no matter what our style. And so I really encourage you to consider what is your style. You're all unique. God has made each one of you. And he's made you for purpose to reach people for him that only you can reach. It's important that you remember, for those of you who know Jesus, that you have received power to be his witness. You're uniquely gifted. I want to conclude by, um, we have a, an amazing gal in our congregation, Dr. Jill Bedell. I like the doctor part. Sounds so cool. Um, it, it was really interesting. Jill and I had lunch a couple weeks ago, and she said, I, I really feel like I'm supposed to share this with you, and, and it's a class that she does. And it's called, Call Forth Your Destiny. And it says, this course will take you on a journey to discover the majestic destiny inside of you through these steps. Now get this, discovering your unique design, what makes you you, who God has made you to be, and expression, how you express the gospel through it. I'm just thinking that's a coincidence <laughs> that she and I would talk about that and she has done this. And so um, we've not set a date for it yet, but I want to encourage you when we do, um, that you would kind of come and find out if you don't know. And so I told Jill I was gonna kind of announce this. Um, she didn't know, um, but we're gonna do this soon. And Jill and I are gonna sit down and come up with a time. See guys, uh, we have been given an amazing commission to share that which has been given to us. And it's an amazing hope. And we as a body are going to go out and change our community because we're not going to stay inside these walls. And we're going to start hearing testimonies. I got a really good testimony. Somebody came up to me a few weeks ago and said, you know, Don, I think, I think I'm getting it. Uh, I was in line at the store the other day and I felt like the Lord said, talk to this person. I think they said behind them. He said, I really felt like the Lord was telling me to talk to them. I didn't. But, I think I heard God. <laughs> and I'm going, yes! That's awesome! It is awesome! See, that's where it starts. It's like, it's so hard sometimes if you're not used to it. But I'm going to encourage you. Step up. Okay? 
Just step out and be you. And see what God does. So look at these different ways that, that, that maybe it's a style that fits you. Figure out what style fits you or who you are. Just be yourself, empowered by the Spirit, and go out and do. Don't let your, your style be the thing, but let the Holy Spirit use your style to do what He wants to do. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so worship team, if you'll come forward. I'm going to sing one more song because that's what we do at the end of the service, right? That's the liturgy here, right? So um, we're going to do that really quick. And then we have a few minutes um, in the next room. If you need prayer for anything, um, if you don't know Jesus, you can. It's really not that hard. You know what it is to know him? It's to follow him. Really simple. Say, I'm done going this direction. Now, Jesus, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to do what you asked me to do. That's all it is in becoming a Christian. Jesus said, just follow me. Okay, so it's not a magical prayer. It's not, and though we'd love to pray with you, as you if you make that, just want to make that decision. But it's simply a decision now. You know what, I'm not going to live for me anymore. Uh, I kind of seen where that's going, and it ain't working too good. So I'm going to try this Jesus out and see if maybe there's something to this. Maybe that's why Don is so happy. So this person yesterday told me, I'm going to change where I've been going. And I'm going to start going that way. Will you help me? Yep, sure will. So guys, let's get out there. Seriously, you're amazing people. When I came up, Lori said to me, Aren't this, isn't this just the greatest group of people? And I went, yeah, all except for, no. I said, yes. <laughs> all right, we're going to sing a song, and then we're going to close. And if you need prayer, just go through that door. If you want prayer for healing, salvation, just prayer for strength, prayer for anything. We have a group of people that would love to pray with you.
and I think that they will be blessed. Amen? If you need prayer, right over there. If not, Father, we thank you that you call each of us by name. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be alive and well in us, and that we would recognize how you have empowered us to go, and Lord, that we would just get a little bit of boldness to be who we are, and watch what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.